Hey folks, Corey from Rockpile. How are ya? So, a bit of a strange video, this one. This is about the Polaris rebuild. My next door neighbour had a Polaris Ranger. He crashed it into a tree, rode it off. I ended up with it, and now I'm making a whole new chassis for it. But as you can see, what I've done here is we've got the engine, transmission and the rear drive and suspension. So, just basically made the frame, took a heap of measurements and just putting the existing Polaris stuff inside it. So, I drew it up in Fusion, took a lot of measurements and then I started cutting it bits of tube up, got them on the bench there, welding them together to make the general shape. Then I brought in a few of the bigger components and fitted them up. And we just finish off with the good world. So this is behind the shed. This is the big, the uh, <laughs> this is the Polaris junkyard. So basically, this is all the old chassis components. You can see how much they've rusted out. It's just like it's just uh, just rotted out. It's an old Polaris. I think it's like a two thousand and seven. I'm not actually sure, but it's a just a. A Ranger 500. So now what I'm doing is I've just flipped this upside down and I'm just cutting away basically this frame. I want to try and I'm going to make new mounts for the lower A-arms. I'm going to do that this morning just out of some square tube. I'll just cut some 45 degree miter pieces. Um, and then essentially Try and cut, try and cut this main frame, this section through here, off, and then use this and weld to the new chassis. So essentially, this bit, this box section here, will be the new chassis. Remember, like, subscribe. If you like to see a little bit more of this sort of, you know, light fabrication stuff. Okay, so I've just. Uh, this is the first bracket I'm going to make for the uh, part of the front suspension mounts. So I'm just doing a little experiment, just cutting one, and I'll test fit it and see what I think of it. If it's good, I'll make another eight or seven. So we'll just cut this one, and we'll have a look at it. So we'll just pretend that this is the side of the chassis, and that'll get welded on like that. And there'll be another one that mirrors that out here, and that will have a hole in it, and then your A-arm will come off there. Okay, so I quite like these saws. Um, they will pretty much cut whatever fits in the vise, really. You know, I've got a couple of different blades, whether it's for just steel, stainless steel, or aluminium. They all get ground on a different tooth pitch or something. I don't know, the place that does it, that's, that's their job. So it's quite accurate. Um, you can see here, I don't know if we'll be able to get the focus in. And we'll just get rid of that little bit. But, I mean, that was cut down the actual side of the tube and we're just about left with a, like a bloody knife edge there. So that's how square and accurate we can get these saws cutting. I'm gonna sand this one up and have a look at it. I'll probably cut it back in through here on each side and just round that corner so it's a bit nicer to weld. I won't weld that little bit of stuff on. So, that'll weld on the new chassis. This will be the new chassis, like that. We simply drill a hole here. So we have one there, one there. A-arm will bolt through it. Easy, saves me trying to cut all these off and reuse them because I just want to get away with um, not using any of this rusted stuff. I know these arms are looking a, uh, a bit old and rusted, but they're um, they're in pretty good nick still, and they'll be easy enough to manufacture later if I need to, or if I need to purchase um, purchase some. But I generally like to make most stuff. So we'll just quickly whip back into the shed, and I'll explain to you what I'm going to do next, and then I'll just cut seven more of these. All right, 
Yes, we're recording. All right, we're back at the saw, my favorite saw, my only saw. So, obviously that was cut through like that. And then the beauty of this is uh, we've already got that angle for the next one. So I will just say, say put that up there and then get my scribe and scribe a line. And then I'll set the saw back for 90 degrees, cut that. And then, then we'll have two. And then I'll just keep repeating this process back and forth um, until we get what we want. Eight of them. Start cutting. Okay, so I'm over the little bench here. Um, I use a mixture of, for cutting and grinding, uh, these cutoff wheels. Um, I don't have sponsorship, but so don't worry about that. I've just found that these are the one mil disc. These are 125 in diameter or five inch, I think, in bananas. Um, best cutoff wheels I've found. And I also use a mixture of sanding pads on a, what do you call that thing? Backing disc, I suppose. I've cut it down in diameter so it uh, is a bit smaller and it allows me to kind of fine tune the, the surface and make it a, get a nice neat finish. Oh, that is a 36 grit. Uh, we do have uh, 80 grit and 60 grit as well uh, that just screws onto the grinder uh, so start with I'm just going to cut all of these off here through there uh, I haven't marked it I'm just going by eye the really only crucial point of these is how far that hole comes out from the when it goes against the chassis and make sure the, the holes in the center that way and whatever the measurement is out off the chassis Okay, this is my least favourite part. Just so much grinding and cutting all this old rusty frame out. So, I was out here last night. Uh, went through probably five cutting discs. Cutting it up so far. So I want to try and keep as much of the dash part intact. And basically just remove this section of rusty frame and then sit that on my new frame and fingers crossed because I did all the measurements it should fit <laughs> 